am Ife Salaudin. And this is my favorite pastime, reading novels, especially thriller genre. I love thriller novels because the storylines are able to make me go on a ride from the beginning to the end. They pull you in, build tension with intriguing suspense, and keep you guessing until the very end. So, what makes a good story? And how do we begin writing a story? We will learn that today. Story writing helps us learn to put their thoughts into order and use written language to communicate our ideas. So, by the end of this lesson, you will be able to learn the steps to write a story or narrative using appropriate registers to the target audience. Let's begin. First of all, most stories have a beginning, middle, and end. Think of it as BME. B for beginning, M for middle, and E for ending. Easy, right? The beginning of a story usually introduces and describes the character, place, and time of a story. The middle section is used to describe the action or the things that happen to the people or in the place of the story. Moreover, the middle section of a story can contain several paragraphs so that you can describe more actions. This stage is also could be where you sometimes include something surprising or unexpected. The end of a story explains all the action or events in a story or you can leave the readers with a question or mystery. Let me show you this diagram. It can help you see clearer the points that I have mentioned just now. And it will help you to plan for your writing. Firstly, you must decide a title for your story. For an example, the return. Then, you add in the characters. Let's see. Who could they be? Ha! Let's name them Rita and Sharpie. Okay, characters done. Now, what about the setting? Ah, you're not sure what setting means. Setting is actually referring to the time and place, or it answers the when and where of the story. So, we're going to choose the time. It's after school, on a bright sunny day, and happened at Rita's new house. This is what happened in the story. Sharpie the cat was buried after a car hit it in 2019 and they moved to a new house soon after. So, what was the problem? Nine months after they moved, a friend called to inform a grey cat has been at their old house trying to get in, looking strangely similar to Sharpie. Went to investigate and there was Sharpie all chubby and healthy, wearing a collar with Rita's old number on it. We are going to end the story with Sharpie that came back from the dead. Stunned but happy, but whose cat did Rita bury back then? Now that we have all the information we need, let's write the story. How's your story coming along? I am very excited to share my story with you. 
Let's read it together. The Return Rita, a tall and clever girl from Equin, just got back from school, thinking of her plans for the weekend when the phone rang. It was her old classmate from her old neighbourhood, Taman Desa. She called to inform that there was a grey cat that had been trying to get into her old house for about a week or so, and it looked strangely similar to Shapi, her cat. Confused and curious, Rita went back to her old house with her parents, and true enough, there was a grey cat sitting in front of their house. All chubby and healthy came running towards her the moment she got down from the car. Rita read the name on the pink collar. Rita's old phone number was on it. Yes, it was Shabby, her dead cat, hit by a car six months ago, buried. Shabby came back from the dead, stunned but happy. Whose cat did she bury back then? How did you enjoy the story? Do you like the ending? I particularly love the ending with the air of mystery hanging above it. Do you agree with me? When planning to write a story, there is another aspect that you must put into consideration. It is the kind of language you are going to use in it, and you can do that by using narrative tenses. Because an important part of telling a story is using the right tenses as they help show the reader how the events in your story fit together. Here's the list of tenses we often use when writing a story. The past simple, the past continuous, the past perfect simple, and the past perfect continuous. I will explain further on their usage. The most common tense for stories is the past simple. We use the past simple to talk about completed actions in the past. We often use several past simple tenses, one after another. She stopped running, took the diary out of her bag, and threw it into the monsoon drain. She went for a walk in the forest when she came across an abandoned house. We also use the past continuous in stories and it is used for two main reasons. The first is to set the scene before the action of the story begins. For example, the teenagers were eating in the garden when they heard the blast. While she was walking past the house, she heard a strange sound coming from it. Next, the past perfect simple is also important to explain about an action that happened before the time of the narrative or another past action. The plane had left by the time I got to the airport. By the time Nona got to the party, everyone had gone home. Last but not least, use past perfect continuous tense to talk about an action that was in progress for some time in the past. It had been raining heavily for several hours. They had been living in Suri Kabangan since 10 years ago. 
The following paragraph shows a typical way in which these four tenses are used in a story. Last Wednesday, I was driving back home after grocery shopping when the misfortune happened. It had been raining since the previous night and the roads were wet. I probably wasn't focusing enough because I was thinking about a problem I'd had at work the previous day. Anyway, I was approaching a sharp bend near the Caltex petrol station when out of a sudden a man dashed across the road. Taken by surprise, I swerved to avoid knocking into him. I lost control of the car, it skidded. I crashed into the road divider. I was unhurt, lucky, yet the car was wrecked beyond recognition. I hope this will help you use stances accurately in your own narratives. Let me know if you have any questions. Your English teacher has asked you to write a story of an unexpected event. Before you start writing, it is wise to think of lots of ideas first. Jot down notes on who could be in your story and the place he or she could be in. Think about words you can use to describe the people and the place in your story. Note some ideas for the middle of the story. What happens? Is there something surprising and unexpected? Then, think about how you can end your story with an explanation or a mystery. Let's use our first story about the return of the dead cat as an example. Ha! Do you remember the story? Let's read it again. The Return Rita, a tall and clever girl from Equin, just got back home from school, thinking of her plans for the weekend when the phone rang. It was her old classmate from her own neighborhood, Taman Desa. She called to inform that there was a grey cat that had been trying to get into her old house for about a week or so. And it looked strangely similar to Sharpie, her cat. Confused and curious, Rita went back to her old house with her parents. And true enough, there was a grey cat sitting in front of their house. All chubby and healthy came running towards her the moment she got down from the car. Rita read the name on the pink collar. Rita's old phone number was on it. Yes, it was Sharpie, her dad, cat, hit by a car six months ago, buried. Sharpie came back from the dead, stunned but happy. But whose cat did she bury back then? It wasn't that hard to write, was it? Once you have followed the guidelines, it gives you a clearer picture on how to write a good story. And as the saying goes, practice makes perfect. You can definitely get better at it too if you practice hard. What happens after we have finished writing a story? Is that the end? Do we submit our story straight away to our teacher? Ha. Here's an advice for you before you submit your story. Please review it first. Do this by reading and checking the finished story carefully. Then, ask yourself, 
whether the story makes sense. Check that your story has a beginning, middle, and an ending. After that, check that you have used the correct narrative tenses. It is wise to let you have enough time to check your story before you send in your work. I am sure with what you have learned today, you can't wait to start writing more stories and let flow all those creative ideas of yours. Let's run through all the major features in writing a good story. Let's use this diagram as our reminder. Firstly, you decide a title for your story. Then, you add in the characters and how are they going to be like. Settings comes next. This is an important element that refers to the time and place of the story. Then, Briefly create the plot of the story which tells us what happens in the story by jotting down notes about the main event. Then, introduce the twist of the story or problem faced by the characters. Give a solution and bring the story to an end. Not to forget to write out a full plan of the story and deciding places where you might put in descriptive details and perhaps some dialogues. In short, we just remember B M E, beginning, middle and ending. What happens after we have finished writing our story? Is that the end? Do we submit our story straight away to our teacher? Once you have finished writing, do these steps. Review your story. Read and check the finished story carefully. Then, ask yourself whether the story makes sense. Check that your story has a beginning, middle, and ending. After that, check that you have used the correct narrative tenses. And spend some time to check your story before you send in your work. Well, since the best way to learn how to write a plan is by making one on your own, Let's try it with this question. Write about the most frightening experience you have had. Let's start with creating a title for your story. Next, think of your main character and minor ones in the story. Are they going to be brave, timid, or polite. So, where is the setting? Now, jot down a brief outline of your story, dividing it into paragraphs. Looks like we are ready to write a story. Let's do this together. Is your story ready? Mine is. But before that, did you check your story first before you decided that it's ready to be submitted? You did? Well done! I will share the story about my encounter with a ghost. It was indeed horrifying. Get ready! <laughs> Lock all your doors 
and close your windows. Here we go. The most frightening experience I have had. Dush, 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 bang! Wow! We cried in unison, recalling the skillful moves the boxers made during the match just now at Kurukiri Hall. Simultaneously, Adi, Akit, and I were talking animatedly while waiting for Mum to fetch us. It was already 11:50 p.m., almost midnight. So we decided to walk further up the road to wait at the bus stop. It was brighter there, therefore easier for Mum to spot us. So deep in the conversation that we hardly realized we had just passed by a graveyard. Suddenly, a branch snapped, making a loud thud as it landed onto the road. However, that didn't scare me. What disturbed me was the fact that the graveyard was not there this afternoon when we came. We used the LRT to travel from Kinrara and decided to walk from the Kurukiri station to the hall. It was only 600 meters away. I looked at Akit and said, we must have missed it this afternoon. Akit nodded in agreement, but not Adi. He was as white as a ghost himself, rooted to the ground. With quivering voice, he said, "I can hear someone following us." We laughed it off, saying he was imagining things. Akit and I. Pulled his hands and continued walking. I was just about to explain the dashes, swift moves to the boys when Adi screamed. I did not ask why, but just kept on walking faster. Simultaneously, I could hear sounds of footsteps going faster too, which gave me goosebumps. The sound was getting louder and nearer. Being the brave and stubborn soul that I am, I turned my head around. I stopped in my track, warned Adi not to turn around. Akit did though. What we both saw nearly made us cringe. It was a figure in a dirty, bloody, full Japanese army suit. Bearing a sword in one arm, and more terrifyingly, walking towards us, carrying its head in another arm. I was frozen with fear until the lights from moving cars shone directly at us from the opposite side of the road. Then we heard a loud honk. It was Mum. Without wasting any time, we ran towards the car, scrambling one after the other to get in and slam the doors shut. Mum panicked when she saw us in that condition. What happened? You look as if you had seen a ghost, she exclaimed. In between heavy breaths, I told her the story. She looked half amused, but concentrated on listening anyway. She started moving her car and drove towards Kurukiri Hall, from where we came. What graveyard, boys? I don't see any. Mum asked. We were horrified. The graveyard was not there anymore. Blood drained from our face, and Adi looked as if he was going to cry. Yet, we could faintly hear the faint sounds of boots marching as we made our journey home. So, there it is. 
a story about one of the most frightening experience. I hope you have enjoyed reading it as much as I have enjoyed writing it. So, stay safe, be happy, and have fun practicing your story writing. Bye bye.